everyone, welcome to Working On It. I'm Dr. A and I'm a clinical psychologist aiming to make your life just a bit more manageable. Remember the tools and the tidbits that you pick up on this channel are purely educational. They can't replace therapy, but with some practice, they can help you along in your daily life. So let's get started. Today, we will be working on what to do when we're overwhelmed. All of us get overwhelmed at one point or another, all different ages, all different stages in our life, we know what that feeling is like. And we've had it in short moments of, or big spans of time. Some people liken it to feeling dread. Some people liken it to a sensation of drowning or not being able to take one good breath all day. Either way, it's very unpleasant. And I'm gonna sort of walk you through what specifically you can do. So when you are feeling overwhelmed, what it is, is you feeling like you have all these responsibilities or all these thoughts or all these things going on in your life that's a burden and way not enough resources to manage it. So too many things demanding your attention and not nearly enough resources to attend to them. So when I say resources, mental resources, emotional resources, physical resources, so it's not a good feeling. Now, what do we do? What can we actually do to help ourselves when we are feeling overwhelmed? Because we feel overwhelmed all the time, right? So. I mean, this could be something like you have a deadline coming up at work and uh, you just feel like there isn't enough hours in the day. It could be something like the workday is very demanding and takes a lot out of you. And when you come home and you feel depleted, right when you walk through the door, there's more people or things that need your attention. Or it could be when you're younger and you're in school, college, high school, middle school, and you just feel like you have all these tests, all these projects coming up, and they're all happening in one week, right? Or in one day. The first thing we can do is ground ourselves in the present. There's a video that I'll link to this video that we've already done on grounding ourselves in the present by using our senses. Because when we're overwhelmed, our mind is constantly like a motor. What's next? What's next? What do I have to do? Can I do this? Right? And so we're already feeling overwhelmed and our mind is not helping the matter. So we have to drag ourselves back into the present, drag ourselves back into our physical body, even if for a few moments to knock down the temperature of how high and hot everything is getting. And so go to that video, take a look at how we can use the senses to ground ourselves in, in the present. The second thing is to remember that multitasking, no matter how much we do it, is not a thing. Our brain cannot multitask. Maybe some people are a little better at it than others, but overall we cannot multitask. And so <laughs> it's a hard thing to, to, it's a hard pill to swallow because we do it all the time. We watch TV while we're on the laptop, while we're on our phones, while we're chatting with the person on the other line. And it just doesn't work. Nothing is really getting our attention. We're not really being so productive with any one thing. Now, that was just recreation time. Think about the things in our life that really need our attention. Multitasking certainly doesn't work there either. So focus on one thing at a time. As simple as it sounds, we usually don't do that. Focus on one thing when that thing is taken care of, you can focus on the next thing or the next group of things. And the third step after that is to actually, once you focus on it, start to do one little baby thing at a time. Start to take one small step. So for me, when I work out, I hate working out. And when I think about it, I will say, oh my God, I have to work out for half an hour. Instead, I say to myself, just do one crunch. Just get on the floor and do one crunch. When I do it, I usually can get that momentum and do more or one sit up and can get that momentum and do more. But if I just see it as this big task, I'm gonna avoid it, I'm gonna procrastinate it, and maybe even gonna skip some days. Or when you're in school and you're sitting in front of that dreaded blank page required to write an essay and the cursor is just blinking on that blank page and you have no idea what to write. Just tell yourself, write 
anything, write something, write one sentence. Usually when you do that small step, you can do the next step. Okay, when that's done, you could do the next step. But just starting with one small step, even if you have to say it to yourself out loud, what the next small step is, it works. So you ground yourself in the present using your senses. You focus on one thing at a time. And then just think about taking that very, very, very small step. The more you start to use this, the more productive you will be, the less overwhelmed you will be. When you're actually moving toward it, moving toward it, we get less overwhelmed. So give it a try. There's many, many more things, many more tools that you can use for feeling overwhelmed, but I don't want to overwhelm you with too many tools. So we'll focus on these three. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, and in the next video, I'll be teaching you how to manage expectations. The expectations and the verbal cues that we put on others and on ourselves that sort of um, are very rigid and lead to very intense negative emotions um, when our expectations aren't met. So we will figure out how to use different words how we can do that to manage our expectations. Until then, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will be alerted as new content becomes available so we can just sort of grow our toolbox and learn many, many different things. I try to be as wide in my topics as possible. Um, so come back and see if the next one might be helpful or interesting to you. You got this. See you next time.